From WRAL News, this is Focal Point. Will you love him, comfort him, honor, and keep him? I would say that we've seen almost a 50% increase in military divorces. In sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer. I've seen it all. Spouse leave husband while in combat zone, you know, or uh, spouse commit adultery while in the combat zone. For better, for worse, in sadness and in joy. There's always that nagging fear and that anxiety that um, you know, someone else is getting close to your, your baby doll or someone's getting close to your kids. To cherish and continually bestow upon her your heart's deepest devotion, forsaking all others. It's so easy to get into a place of self-pity or, or doubt or they, there they go again, I'm alone again. Why, why should I be alone? Why do I have to be alone? Keep yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live. I've changed while he's been deployed and he's changed while he's been downrange. May you always share with each other the gifts of love. Be one in heart and in mind. Some come back and the spouse says, you know, I, I don't want anything to, to do with, with what you have become. And so by the power vested in me by the state of North Carolina and Almighty God, I now pronounce you husband and wife. There's only so much pressure that families can take. rate for military couples is typically higher than for civilians. After all, they tend to be young and face long periods of separation. But the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and the long and repeated deployments they've caused have contributed to an alarming spike in the rate of divorce among Army couples, many of them here at Fort Bragg. Our focal point, the stress that war puts on military marriages and why the Army is so concerned about it. Laura Cole was 24 when she married into the military. She says she wasn't prepared for being an Army wife. Especially financially, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> there were some really tough times. Her husband, Michael, was 23 and in the Army Special Forces. While stationed at Fort Bragg, he worked and trained 80 hours a week. Training missions took him away from home for months at a time. Our focus was more self-centered, and we didn't have a vision yeah. for each other. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were always angry or, you know, I was always like in self-pity because I was thinking he's gone all the time. I have this kid and I live in this shoe box and he's gone all the time. Then came the war and a four month deployment to Afghanistan in 2002 and a year long deployment to Iraq in 2004. It's so easy to get into a place of self-pity or or doubt, or they, there they go again, I'm alone again. Why, why should I be alone? Why do I have to be alone? I'm young, I'm still okay looking. Let me go out now and do what I wanna do. Now she's the dad, she's the mom, she's um, the sustainer, she's the bill payer, she's the carpooler. My, my son and my daughter were both in the hospital so many times I can't even tell you during the time of deployment, um, dealing with anxiety so bad. Michael Cole missed six of his daughter's nine birthdays. You know, parents are supposed to be in their kids' lives, and here we are, all of a sudden, a year is taken away, or six months is taken away out of their life. Deployments can make marriage a casualty of war. I've seen it all. Um, spouse leave husband while in combat zone, you know, or uh, spouse commit adultery while in the combat zone. Sometimes life after deployment is harder than deployment itself. The wife is generally on quote unquote go mode. Um, she's been doing everything. And if the husband comes back and says, I'm the man and it's going to be this way, and he, there's an adjustment period because the wife has to step back a little bit and walk hand in hand now. And then also the spouse that's been downrange, especially if they've been in leadership, have been making life and death decisions. And so they bring that life and death decision making back into the house. He was in that mode, that mentality, and I was like, you're on leave, hooray, let's, you know, let's go on vacation. And I had to let him 
download first. Yeah, decompress. I really did, because he was not ready for vacation. We'll be back in a second all the way. Both deployment and the readjustment period afterwards can cause conflict in a marriage. There's a high divorce rate within the military. Yeah. And the Army try, all armed forces try to combat that. While the civilian divorce rate is less than 1% a year, the Army divorce rate is around 4% a year. And from 2003 to 2004, the divorce rate for Army enlisted personnel jumped 28%, while the rate for Army officers jumped 78%. The divorce rate for officers more than tripled from 2001 to 2004. Oh, good throw. Here, Mama. Yeah. The Coles believe the divorce rate is higher for officers because they feel more pressure to put their careers first. And what that does is put a price on your family. Lord God, we just come before you right now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Coming up, how the Cole family survived and why so many military families do not. I think it's hard being separated. You have temptations. Um, I think they get lonely. I think that, you know, there's female soldiers. <laughs> Focal Point from WRAL News. In-depth coverage you can count on. Deployment is tough on military couples. Stress is a given. Infidelity is common. The long separation can be the last nail in the coffin for a troubled marriage or the first nail in a healthy one. Some couples survive. Others don't. Come on, Charlie. Tim and Tracy Holt are veterans of military life and the marital strife it can cause. Tim was deployed a total of three years during his Army career. That's tough on a marriage. It is. It is. And I've got the broken ones to, to show for it, too. Deployment to Iraq during Desert Storm helped break his last one. One of her ways of dealing with the loneliness and the separation and, and the anxiety was uh, really to spend money. After Iraq, Tim looked forward to life back with his wife and son. Instead of having a bankroll of combat pay uh, saved in the bank like many of my buddies had, I came home to an extra $22,000 in credit card debt. Tim felt angry and betrayed. The communication stopped. We, we, the, only, the only communicating we would do would be uh, in aggression and, and arguments. And our relationship deteriorated and she developed a, a close uh, male friendship that, that, went, uh, that went into an affair. I mean, I was trying to deal with sights and sounds that, that nobody should have to see from Iraq. And then I come back and nobody should have to feel um, the, the absolute uh, murdering feeling of being betrayed like that. It, 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 eviscerated me. I think every day we're here is a day closer to going home. Though Tim believes the affair started after his return from Iraq, he says it's every soldier's worst fear while overseas. That is one specter that looms in the back of every soldier, married soldier or, or involved soldier's mind is, is uh, Jody. Jody is a name coined by soldiers for their wife or girlfriend's fictional lover. Soldiers sing cadences and make jokes about Jody. And does that help it go away? It never goes away. It, it, there's always that nagging, uh, nagging fear, and that anxiety that um, you know someone else is getting close to your your baby doll, or someone's getting close to your kids. Yeah, this is Ronnie Smith. I'm a uh, RDS investigation. Fayetteville Private Eye Ronnie Smith says soldiers in Iraq sometimes hire him to keep an eye on their wives. The women are here for a year and they haven't seen their husband. It's very hard on them. Of course, they go out with friends at night and one thing leads to another. Smith says about 60 percent of his infidelity investigations are military and those cases have increased by about 40 percent over the last couple of years. A lot of them don't want to believe it until you send them the photos or the videos. We do hard disks and send to them. But Smith knows that some bombshells may be too big for soldiers in combat. I try not to tell them everything because of the situation they're in. If infidelity is confirmed, soldiers often turn to family law attorneys like Bryce Nyer. I've seen a significant increase. Nyer says traffic on his website has quadrupled since it went online two years ago. 
10 to 15 new emails a day, people inquiring, and the bulk of them are, a lot of them are in Iraq or in Afghanistan, they have access to email. Engaging target. Nyer says many times soldiers are looking for consultation because they've been served with divorce papers. Or their spouse said, hey, goodbye, it's over. And they get the email and, you know, you've got child custody issues or they're cleaning out the accounts here and they're, they're contacting us. So I've seen a significant increase. You're cleared hot on right yet. Nyer says sometimes the spouse at home is having an affair and sometimes it's the other way around, thanks in part to a co-ed army. There's not a lot of places to go in Iraq, obviously, to have fun, but somehow they're managing to find time to be alone. Uh, and then those moments can probably get pretty intimate. And next thing you know... Nyer says in many of the military cases he handles, one spouse is already thinking of leaving, and deployment just provides an opportunity. And with somebody leaving, it makes it a lot easier logistically to do things if you're going to get out of the marriage. Experts say deployments can be the fatal bullet for military marriages that are already wounded. I think the war was a straw for those couples that were already um, under tension and already beginning to think about whether this relationship's going to work. I think the war was a straw. Deployment was the last straw for Tracy Holt's first marriage. She and her first husband were both in the Army. We were married for four years, but total time together was nine months because of deployments. So how's your day going? Tracy and Tim found each other and helped co-found a divorce care program at Fayetteville's Mana Church. What should you do if your spouse or ex-spouse is expressing strong anger? Tracy helps teach the 13-week course. Welcome to divorce care. Each class begins with an instructional video followed by group discussion. They want to know how they can get over this hurt, which the whole, the whole course is, the class is designed to help with that. This woman, who we'll call Jane, is taking the course. Her husband left her after returning from a year-long deployment. And he just said that he didn't want to be married anymore. How have you been affected by this? It's devastating. This bombshell. It's, um, it's shaken everything. Your dreams, everything, everything, everything you planned, every, you know, your dreams together, just everything. I think it's hard being separated. You have temptations. Um, I think they get lonely. I think that, you know, there's female soldiers. It's very hard on marriages. Do you feel like you failed? Yeah, I do. Now Jane is in the divorce care program trying to work through her feelings. And it has helped tremendously. The military would not let one of our soldiers go into battle without giving them training. Next, what the Army is doing to try to prevent divorce and keep its family strong. If marriage is going to be a priority, we have to make it one. And I don't know that the military is really doing that. <laughs> Watching Focal Point from WRAL News, in-depth coverage you can count on. As the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan continue, the Army has begun to understand that the strength of its soldiers in battle is tied to the strength of their families back home. The spike in the Army divorce rate alarmed some of the top brass. Now the Army is trying to do something about it but some question whether it's enough. Can't wait, I hope she comes. Lance and Jacqueline Moore are facing some very big challenges. They're only 20, they've been married less than a year. They're expecting their first baby in just a few weeks, and he deploys to Iraq in six months. I fear whenever I come home, she's not gonna be here for me. You know, she's gonna be off with somebody else. You know, if you hear bullets flying and you're thinking, who's my wife with right now? Boom, 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 who's my wife with right now? Boom, and then you're dead, mm -hmm. you know, that's not good. If a soldier is going through a divorce, if a soldier's having problems at home, their head's not going to be in the game. It's, it's going to be difficult for, for them to, to really do what they need to do as a soldier. Listen. That's why the Army is doing more to strengthen its soldiers' marriages. Did you see him with his eyes go up in the sky like that as if he was like, oh, please get me out of this? 
This couple's communication class at Fort Bragg is supposed to help couples prepare for the challenges of deployments. And we hope that we'd be able to give them enough information and skills and tools to prevent the possibility of, uh, of feeling so lonely that I am um, that I stray from my marriage. You're not the only couple going through whatever it is. If there is infidelity, the Army offers counseling to try and help couples save their marriage. And the the ones that that really want to save their marriage. They can do that. Is this the way you normally have a discussion? In these classes, couples are urged to stay in contact as much as possible during deployments by telephone and email. I ask them to please use the computer for, for communication in a positive way, not to talk about horrible things that are going, the pipe just broke in the house, the car just broke down. Sorry, Sanford. And spouses at home are urged to also communicate with handwritten letters. So that when my soldiers are downrange, that he has a hard copy of a letter in my handwriting that he can put in his pocket and that when he's not near the computer or when he's not, that he could pick it up and he could read that. There are also classes to help couples with the difficult readjustment period when a soldier returns home from deployment. Helping them to understand that uh, the way we were before you left, it just might not be like that immediately. With his deployment coming up, Lance and Jacqueline signed up for the couple's communication class. What made you sign up for it? Um, we had been having, you know, a couple of problems here and there, and uh, we were fighting, and I didn't like the way we were fighting, and she didn't like the way we were fighting. What percentage of housework does your husband do? Zero percent. Zero percent! <laughs> Couples fairs at Fort Bragg show soldiers all the new programs available to help them keep their relationships strong. Army in particular, but all the services have very significantly ramped up their supportive services. We've learned a lot uh, since Desert Shield, Desert Storm, uh, each one of the deployments. We've come a long way and we learn each time. Lock and load, 120 round magazine. The Army is trying to ditch an image. If the Army had wanted you to have a spouse, they would have issued you one. It's not that. We know that the best soldier is the one that does have a good family. But at the end of the day, the Department of Defense uh, and all the various military you know, organizations are not going to fix a couple's marriage. Only they can fix it. Some say there is one important step the military could take. Cease fire, cease fire, cease fire. Well, I think the military has to send people home more often. Um, I think they have to come home every three to four months. I think they need that, even if it's only for a week at a time. Now, paratroopers, uh, you're now joining in on the, uh, the fight against terrorism. But the Army's first priority is to accomplish its mission. The family tends to be somewhat second in that, in that scenario. Uh, but it's now a strong second as opposed to being a weak second. As the war continues, so will deployments. There's a lot more inducements being given to soldiers right now to be able to stay in for longer periods of time. And when they do that, they extend the opportunity of also being divorced while they're still on active duty. Fire! And some fear that as the military stretches resources to pay for more equipment and troops, it will cut family support programs. If it gets cut, I think you're going to see divorce rates going up. Throw, Mama. Next, how the Cole family has avoided becoming a statistic. Just as he made a vow to our country, we made a vow to him. You're watching Focal Point from WRAL News. In-depth coverage you can count on. To learn more about the issues covered in this episode of Focal Point, go to WRAL.com and click on News. After the huge spike in 2004, the Army divorce rate fell in 2005, but still remained higher than before the war in Iraq. Experts credit Army programs aimed at strengthening marriages and families, and they say many military families have simply become more resilient after coping with years of deployments. Perhaps younger couples entering the military can learn from their experience. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For the Coles, good communication has been the key. He made a conscious effort to send me letters, to send me pictures, to email me when he could. Laura returned the favor, but kept bad news to herself. And I would cry, but I wouldn't necessarily always cry to him. There were moments that I would, but I would try to protect him as much as I could from being emotionally distraught because I knew where he'd want to be. He'd want to be here helping, and I knew he wouldn't be able to. 
You're right in my heart always. But Michael did find ways to be home, virtually. And that uh, I'm always thinking about you and your brothers. He made audio and videotapes before he left for Iraq. To do those things so that at that key moment when your son or your, your baby's missing you, then you can put in an audio tape and right. they can hear his voice. Right. Or <laughs> you can put a videotape in and I'm reading a book to them. And that I love you so much. When the virtual husband isn't enough, Laura says lonely spouses should seek support. In the military or in friendships or at church, wherever you are, find those strengths. They're there. Laura found support through her church. In a DVD it produced, she and other military wives share their stories of coping with their husband's deployment to war. I think about where we're at now. You know, he's been almost 16 years. We wanted to be able to give women hope because we see so many military wives struggling um, to keep their marriage surviving. Laura urges those women to be strong. That old term, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. That's the truth. You've got to make a decision to stand while they're gone. You have to make that decision or you will fall for anything that comes along because it'll make you feel good. Because those times are hard. You are lonely. There are very lonely times. While the Army may be mission focused, Laura reminds couples that they have a mission too, to keep their marriages strong. It's a marriage. It's two people and you have to consider the other one. You can't think just about yourself even if they're not here. A peek inside his Army field book makes it clear what Michael Cole was thinking about while he was in Iraq. There's the kids and there's my princess. 